In this video, I'm going to show you how to use smithing in the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. We're going to cover the benefits of smithing, how to make and improve weapons and armor, and finally, how to level your smithing skill and unlock perks. So why bother with smithing in Skyrim? Well, basically because it will allow you to create some of the very best weapons and armor available in the entire game. This is particularly useful if you want to play at the higher difficulty levels, especially if you pair smithing with other skills such as enchanting and alchemy to really maximize the power of your character. For those interested, I have beginner guides for both alchemy and enchanting on my channel, and they're in the same playlist as this video. So how do you actually make and upgrade items using smithing? Well, firstly, you're gonna need to find the appropriate smithing equipment, which includes a grindstone, a workbench, and a forge or anvil. On top of this, you're also gonna want access to a smelter and tanning rack in order to produce some of the base materials used in smithing. I'd recommend using the equipment available just outside of War Maidens in Whiterun, which can be found at this location on the map. Whiterun's a place that you're gonna be sent to very early in the game, and you'll find everything you need here, including the ability to sell the goods that you make to the proprietors of War Maidens. The only things that you can't accomplish with the equipment outside of War Maidens is the creation of crossbows, which were added with the Dawnguard DLC and require the use of Gunmar's Forge in Fort Dawnguard, as well as the creation of ancient Nord armor and Nord hero weapons, which require the Skyforge that can be unlocked by completing quests for the companions. I have a video in the same playlist as this one that will show you how to join every faction in the game, including the Dawnguard and the companions. Once you've located your smithing equipment, you're then gonna need to use the appropriate equipment for the smithing task that you're looking to accomplish. To create items, you're gonna need to interact with either a forge or an anvil, which both serve the exact same purpose. Then to improve weapons, you're gonna need to use a grindstone, and to improve armor, you'll need to use a workbench. Additionally, to produce the base materials to achieve these tasks, you'll also need to use a tanning rack to turn hides into leather, and a smelter to turn raw ore into metal ingots. Let's go through the process of creating a new item. Firstly, you need to approach a forge or an anvil and interact with it, and this will open the smithing forge menu. From here, you can select a category from the left-hand side and find the item that you wish to create. Once you've selected an item, you'll see a preview of that item, as well as the materials required to craft it at the bottom of the screen. To unlock new categories of items, you're gonna to need to level your smithing skill and unlock the appropriate perks, which we'll cover in more detail in the final section of the video. But in very simple terms, there's basically a perk for each type of weapon and armor that you can create. The materials that you're going to need for smithing are largely gonna be leather, metal ingots, and also gems when making jewelry. As mentioned previously, you can create leather at the tanning rack, and you do this by using animal pelts that you can collect from killing and looting wild animals. This is with the exception of Netch leather, which was added in the Dragonborn DLC and doesn't actually require tanning. You can simply loot it from Netches in an already usable form for smithing. The second key material that you're gonna use in smithing is metal ingots, of which there are many different varieties that will enable crafting different types of weapons and armor. You can produce ingots at the smelter by using metal ores that you can mine all across Skyrim, as well as certain metals that you can loot from enemies and containers. Oh, and by the way, there's not actually any skill attached to tanning and smelting. Providing you have the appropriate raw materials, you'll be able to use the equipment to produce any variety of metal ingots or leather that you require for smithing. Finally, when creating jewelry, you're going to require gems, which can be found randomly when mining ore veins, as well as through normal looting. Once you have all of the required materials, then you simply need to select Create, and you'll have your basic quality item. But how do you improve the item to its best possible quality? This is where the grindstone and workbench come in. The first thing to understand is that there are six levels of quality that you can upgrade to. Fine, Superior, Exquisite, Flawless, Epic, and Legendary. And your ability to upgrade weapons and armor to these qualities depends on your smithing skill level. As you can see from the information on screen, it can get slightly confusing in terms of how the perks that you can unlock from the smithing skill tree impact your ability to improve items. I'll try to summarize. Basically, when you unlock a perk, you'll not only be able to produce the associated type of weapons and armor, you'll also be able to improve that type of weapon or armor at a lower smithing skill level than you would without the perk. 
Let's use steel as an example. If you don't have the steel armor perk, well then firstly you won't be able to make steel armor, so you'd have to find it. And then to improve it to say flawless, you'd need 100 skill in smithing. Whereas if you have the steel perk unlocked, you can number one, make the item yourself, and number two, improve it to flawless quality at a smithing skill level of 57, which is far easier to get than 100. You may also have noticed that if you wanted to improve your steel item to epic without the perk, then you wouldn't be able to, as the max smithing skill is 100, and this would require a skill of 134. Now, strictly speaking, you could use fortify smithing equipment and potions to achieve this without unlocking the steel perk, but the most simple solution is to unlock the perk and then be able to improve the steel item to epic quality at smithing level 74. As you can see on the screen, each time you improve a weapon, it's going to deal more damage, and each time you improve a piece of armor, it will offer you more protection with chest armor receiving a larger boost for each improvement than all other pieces of armor. To actually make an improvement to an item, you simply need to approach the grindstone in the case of a weapon, or the workbench in the case of a piece of armor. Then, providing that you have the required materials for the improvement, which will be shown at the bottom of the screen, you'll then be able to select craft and the improvement will be made to your item. Oh, and one final thing to note regarding improving items is that while smithing allows you to create jewellery, it doesn't allow you to improve jewellery like it does with weapons and armour. So you now know how to make and improve items using smithing. But how do you level your smithing skill and unlock the perks that will enable you to create the very best items available? Well, levelling your smithing skill is actually very simple. All you need to do is create and improve items. The typical way of doing this as quickly and simply as possible is to craft large numbers of cheap items, such as iron daggers. As you can see on the screen, as you level your smithing skill, you'll be able to unlock new perks in the smithing perk tree. And these perks allow you to create new types of weapons and armor. Broadly speaking, the right side of the perk trees unlocks the various tiers of heavy armor, as well as a number of different types of weapon and the left side unlocks light armor, as well as the remaining weapon types. I say broadly speaking, as you do get access to some mid-quality heavy armor on the left side through the advanced armor's perk. It's also worth noting that while the right side offers stronger craftable weapons in the base game, with both ebony and daedric weapons being stronger than glass weapons, if you have the Dawnguard DLC installed, you'll actually be able to unlock the ability to craft dragonbone weapons. And this is due to the changes that the DLC made to the final perk in the tree. This perk is accessible from either side of the perk tree, and in the base game it allows you to craft both light and heavy varieties of dragonbone armor. However, with Dawnguard installed, it will also allow you to produce dragonbone weapons. Now, dragonbone weapons are stronger than both ebony and daedric weapons, meaning that if you have Dawnguard installed, then you're gonna be able to create the very best craftable weapons regardless of which side of the perk tree you go for. Finally, you may have noticed there's also this lonely perk in the middle that allows you to improve magic items, meaning an item that has an enchantment on it. Again, to learn more about enchanting in Skyrim, you can check out my beginner's enchanting guide, which is in the same playlist as this video. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video has given you a basic understanding of how to craft and improve items using smithing. I have a bunch of other Elder Scrolls guides on my channel, so if that's something you're interested in, then maybe consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.